Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Mags, Mags is extra happy. Same as like. A friend of mine woke me up very early this morning asking me a question. But I love you, my friend. If you're here, you, you, you know I still love you. And then we have Kathy here joining us. I can never do, I can never, you would think I'd figure this out by now. There she is. The Brady Bunch image, huh? Yeah, it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. You point, Kathy, see if you can do it. Go ahead. I can point. Oh, don't, don't even just come on here and just be able to do it. <laughs> well, she only has to go up. Yes. It's probably easier. Yes. Because it's like opposite of what you think. Yeah, see, yeah. see. Oh, got to go that way. Ooh, so I we have warm um, people. We've been talking blueberries. Just, just saying. Yeah, we already started talking about blueberry pie. So, just we're just gonna stop. We're just gonna. Okay. No, I didn't have blueberry pie for for um, Thanksgiving. But my son baked a cherry pie from scratch. So, I'm not complaining. I would say anybody that bakes a pie for you, you know, who cares what kind it is. <laughs> yeah. So we have Jory from South Africa here. Hey, Jory. Deanne from West Virginia. We have our usual haunt, Chris. Our usual haunt. And it's Deanna. Deanna. Oh, Deanna. I'm sorry. From Deanna. West Virginia. And then, so something happened with... It's only for me, Kathy. I can only see your really top. <laughs> I can only see Kathy's top right corner. Like I can't even see her. I don't know. It's so weird. Down to your computer, Sarah. Always doing weird stuff. Sometimes I see people upside down. But you're not zooming. No, I don't know. Well, well you. That's okay. Zoom. You may be zooming. Zoom, 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 zoom. Oh. You're not. Okay. So. If you weren't aware, it's kind of a last minute add on. Kathy's here to talk about the Native American project, which we'll talk about um, later on, you know, the last or the last 30 minutes of the stream. But I guess we can talk about our um, hey, Steve. what we're thankful for, you know, our question of the week. No way, really? Yeah. Well, we also have. Kay and Steven just joined us. Yes, hey Kay. Kay. Okay. Kay. Hey Kay. <laughs> More people should come in. Come on. More people are coming in. People. Yeah, we can we can hold off a little bit. My question to you guys as we're carrying through our day is what kind of pie did you have for Thanksgiving? <laughs> What kind of pie did you have for Thanksgiving? That's an important question. Did you even have a pie? Yeah. Well, I don't think Jory in South Africa, do you do Thanksgiving? Probably not. Probably not. Hey, Tommy. Tommy from the Bayou State. Sounds like a country song. Tommy from the Bayou State. They should put that on the, what was the Louisiana hayride? Pumpkin. Don't call me KK. Did you I think call we me just, KK? No, I think we just said K twice. Mm. Like, that wasn't intentional. And we won't say the KI KI word or that will he will appear. <clears throat> pumpkin. I had pumpkin. I also had apple. Ooh, Chris is Marscapone Nelly Cheesecake. Ooh. Pumpkin and apple. Traditional. Yeah. Pumpkin. 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 Uh, cannoli. Cannoli. That sounds delicious. Pumpkin and apple. Hey, Hillary. Glad to see you're here. Good afternoon. <clears throat> no, I didn't see it actually. My pot pie. Oh, I guess that's a. Yeah. Twist on pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. tonight at my house. Oh, really? <laughs> a leftover turkey into a turkey pot pie. We're gonna we're gonna post her address here during the during the talk. Yeah. But you have to you have to have it in out in the street because she's social distancing. You know, she's mm -hmm. a person. She'll like she'll like throw it at you. 
Oh, that's making me think of WKRP in Cincinnati and their whole turkey hullabaloo thingy. All right, so question of the week. We'll jump right into it now. General, what is our question of the week? The question of the week was a fun one. Um, what has researching your ancestors? <laughs> what has researching your ancestors made you more thankful for? Holy goodness gracious! I'm having issues. Here we go. <clears throat> so we had some really good answers. I'm gonna come back to this one. The one of the first answers was my favorite answer. What was a comment? We had lots of comments from lots of different people. Um, uh, and a lot of people talked about their immigrant ancestors and how they were thank thankful that they were courageous and they, they came across and they settled in a new land. And somebody even went through the list of things that they didn't have when they, they came out. They didn't have a job waiting for them. They didn't have a place to live waiting for them. They basically came over on a boat they had an, a, another person's name that they could connect to a cousin or whatever, and they came over. So that's really huge, especially this week with the U.S. celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of people uh, wrote that uh, they discovered that even though they themselves aren't big achievers, that they have huge people in their family trees that were achievers. And it made them feel really good about who they were, even though they weren't the biggest achievers in the world. So we had a couple of comments about that. Uh, Dieter Lawrence said that uh, he loves his ancestors because they gave him a great hobby in genealogy. So <laughs> that, that works. Um, and people are, people are really fine tuning this into genealogy. People say they're very thankful for sourcing which of course on Wikitree, we're incredibly thankful for sourcing because sourcing is so important. Um, some people um, took the kind of immigration idea uh, a bit further and said that they really love the fact that um, people had survived, that their families had survived war, that they were very resilient people and they, they identify that with them, themselves. Um, Let's see that um, some, somebody posted a really fun one that was that life has evolved and that that they themselves and they happen to be a female aren't relegated to staying home, cooking dinners and having 15 children. So that was interesting. Um, people are very thankful for technology that uh, with with the advent of the Internet and how fast the pace we've we've made genealogy is really taking advantage of that and people are very thankful of that here here's one and and um sarah and i were talking about it before the show today is people are actually a little bit thankful that we are having to endure this horrible thing that is the scourge of covid because they have more time at home they have more time with family, which has certainly affected my family. We are just like in love with each other. I don't know why you'd think we'd be killing each other at this point. Um, it's really up the ante on our family time. Um, and it's also giving people a time at home to be able to work on their genealogy. So there you go. Um, people are thankful that their genealogy has given them places to visit and people to research when they go visit. So people who had never thought about going to Madagascar now have a reason to go to Mad Madagascar because they know that their family origins are from Madagascar. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy cool. Um, and my two favorite ones, I, I don't know which one is my favorite favorite. So I'm gonna read them in backwards order. So the very last comment uh, to our the very last answer was from James Brooks, who said, because of genealogy, I know who I am. So if you want to see the rest of his answer, it's a really good one. Go and read it. It's a, it's very touching, but just out of deference, I'm not going to read it to you. It's very good. And the other one is um, Marilyn Kenyon. And she did this, the very first 
comment on the post. Uh, she says that she now has a picture of a literal picture of who her second great grandfather, Lyman Kenyon. Uh, I'd never seen a picture of him, but I have a picture in my mind now because she can tell you that that he was about five eight, uh, medium build. His he had sandy blonde hair. His eyes were gray. And just just having that picture in the mind, she can say that he was quiet, kind, and loving. Uh, his triumphs are her triumphs, and his pain is her pain. How cool is that? So does everybody else have a little chili bumps going on? I do. That's the question of the week. That was a great question of the week. Thank you, Max. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, yes. So I guess kind of going, segueing from... Because this kind of was tied to Thanksgiving time for the United States. So our profile of the week this week was, um, hold on, let me share my screen. <clears throat> I wasn't prepared enough. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Uh-oh. My sweet one. I would, I would have to get out of here. I know. Wampanoag. I, I, I know the accent, but you know who should pronounce it for us? Yeah. Well, I don't speak Wampanoag, but I always pronounced it Massasoit. Massasoit? There we go. Massasoit Wampanoag. Okay. <clears throat> and Wampanoag is his tribe, not his name, because people right. at that point in mm -hmm. time didn't have surnames. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, a good point to make. <clears throat> We just assigned that as his surname for WikiTree for <clears throat> just so they can be clumped, I guess, together. Identified, grouped, Identified. categorized, put into um, their own tribe. Just trying to be your thesaurus today. <laughs> so Massasoit was part of the, the first Thanksgiving. Um, he was, then we also have some of the other, our other profiles of the week were other attendees of the first Thanksgiving. Um, I actually started reading, this kind of prompted me to start reading a book about the Wampanoag people and kind of like him and his son who was um, Medi Medicom or King Philip, um, which I thought was, there's a few books on, on that that I started to read. Um, <clears throat> oh, so in here, look, here's a note. Wikitree's Native American Project uses the required last name at birth field to record the tried name of indigenous individuals who lived prior to the adoption of surnames. So, <clears throat> and then Kathy will talk about that. Do you have any, any fun facts about him, Kathy, that you want to share? Uh, or anything interesting? Well, I didn't. I didn't know much more about him than the average person. That you know, just the first Thanksgiving kind of thing. And his profile a couple of weeks ago was a cut and paste from Wikipedia. So mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks, I started rewriting the biography. So it's a new one. Nice. And it still needs some work, but um, I tried to find some contemporaneous writings about him, even though the, the Wampanoag didn't have a written language, um, the, the pilgrim immigrants were prolific writers. Um, and I'm sure that some of what they wrote was honest and truthful. <laughs> Obviously it was through their own lens. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I, I didn't realize that, that he had um, signed a treaty almost immediately when he met the new colonists um, and that he maintained that treaty of, of friendship and respect for the entire rest of his life, which is quite unusual. Um, I won't say that it paid off for his tribe in the long run. His his son that you read about medical ended up being killed and his head on a pike in some pilgrim town. Um, but at least for the, the time that Massasoit was alive, um, he did respect the colonists and they did try to maintain a friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I guess kind of was what led to that first Thanksgiving um, dinner because he was welcoming 
of them. He was welcoming, but also the the um, poorer settlers were starving to death. So yeah. having the first Thanksgiving also was was really important. Well, so. it, the the, uh, the Wampanoag had been almost completely wiped out in the few years before the Pilgrims had arrived. That somebody brought something, and depending on you know whether it was smallpox or yellow fever, it, but their tribe had been almost completely wiped out by the time those first colonists came. And so they were kind of too weak to drive them off and they were pressured by other tribes surrounding them. So they foolishly or not thought, well, maybe if we make friends with these folks, it'll all work out. They'll keep the guys at bay and we'll all get along. Um, so that was certainly, I think, part of their hope that, that because they obviously the, all the other Europeans who had arrived had been only allowed to stay for a very short time. Um, and the, as we know, the pilgrims almost didn't make it themselves because without the help of the local yes. people, they would have starved to death that first winter. Absolutely. I guess we are thankful to the, the um, Native Americans for helping us. Yes. The first peoples of the Americas. Mm -hmm. So um, then we had some other um, first... Yes, first attendees of the of uh, the first attendees the attendees of the first Thanksgiving. Um, we had Edward Winslow, William Bradford. I was actually really closely, very closely connected, more so than other weeks, to some of these people. Um, Priscilla Mullins, Alden, Mary Brewster, Miles Standish. I'll open these, uh, Mary. Allerton Cushman, George Sol, Soli, and Elizabeth Tilly Howland. And Edward, Governor Edward Winslow Jr., also part of the Mayflower. Um, so they kind of they kind of tie together. Um, we were kind of we were talking about the Mayflower Project last weekend, and we have William Bradford. Also part of the Mayflower, Mary Alden, they're probably all part of the Mayflower, Mary Brewster, Miles Standish, uh, Mary Allerton Cushman from Holland, George Soul Sr., and Elizabeth Tilly Howland. Who are you guys most closely connected to? I think I was most closely. Holland and Cushman, I believe, are my two closest for that. I don't. I was really surprised to find that I was 14 degrees away from all of them. Um, they're all. Oh, wow. Um, um, you know, I'm not related to any of them, but um, they were. They were all. They married each other. And somehow two sets of them married, you know, someone from, from my line married somebody from their line. So, um, yeah, I didn't expect that because I'm not a Mayflower descendant. I have early ancestors from Massachusetts, but not that early. Mm -hmm. I, have lots, I have lots of people who married into the Mayflower lines. I, I don't think I have any specific Mayflower descendants. I'm 33 degrees from uh, Massawit. I'm 36. That's pretty cool. Oh, and that's through my hunts. That's cool. Yeah, so I'm 16, 17. Oh, maybe I'm related to him. That's just one. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, not not directly related. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I always look for friend growing up was a Bradford descendant. And I went to college with a fellow named Wrestling with God Brewster, who was a Brewster descendant. And somebody has had that Wrestling with God name in every generation since the Mayflower. Hmm. That, that's really <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, so those are 
our profiles of the week. Who else? Would anybody say how they were? No, no comments about who's closest connected to who. Um, Hillary says she's only 15 degrees away from one of them. But there there's a weak link in there. The weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we can go into the photos of the week. Oh, yay! And thank you, Kathy, for talking about um, massasoits. You did a better job than I could have. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to say that publicly, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so our theme for the photo of the week is unique. Oh, that rhymes. Theme for the photo of the week is unique. Okay. Um. You're a poet. So we have Amy Florence Porter on a family outing to Landrendog Wells to take water from the spa. Well, that's a cute photo. Landendrat. Landendrat. I'm not even going to try. Oh, in Wales. Oh, how fun. Look at the hats. Mm hmm. Willabelle Pierce and Clarice Lovelace. Did, did, did people have lots of pictures of people walking down the street? Did Was there a photographer who started this? Hey, walk down the street towards me and I'll take this picture of you. How, how did all these, and they're all very similar. Mm-hmm. It was probably just also like, it was probably like an in thing to have a photo of you walk in. Down the street. Yeah. Bob Ward, his wife, Patricia, and his mother, Mildred. Why? And then posing with famed sculptor. Oh, that's a cool photo. It does not it look like a unique. And there's just a, a vase of flowers. Is that a is that a gravestone? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know who. Oh yeah, Barry Cemetery. Yep. <clears throat> Clara Archer. Hmm. 1931 Austrian Derby. Oh, fun. Oh, cool. it has, I guess that's the like first, second, and third. Yeah, for the race. That's harness racing. Mm. My mother in law did that. She was a harness racer. That's big up here. I don't know if it's big anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And then 1901, my grandfather, Arthur Cecilia Morley, was the model for babies, <laughs> for babies' head sculptures on the mantelpiece in the Regate Municipal Building. That is unique. All right. <laughs> is that a predecessor to the uh, Ivory Snow Baby or? Or the Gerber baby? The Gerber baby. That's the one I was looking for. Thank you for... for, she, for she just turned... Apparently, I just saw something that she just turned 90-something. Like, they had a post about her. Um, 50th anniversary done by family. That's cool. That's and it looks like it has, like, a whole bunch of, like, older family photos and newer yeah. family photos. Yeah. Probably all... Of their years, of their 50 years. Yeah, maybe. that's cool. I like that. Very unique. I like that. Yes. Alaskan Caribbean. I'm this looks Caribbean. cool. 3,000 mile trip they'd planned for years over the rugged Alaska highway, highway from Spokane to Anchorage has been completed by two Spokane families, the Clark Petersons, formerly of E2514 8th and the Melvin Krugers, formerly of E9 Bridgeport. Their caravan consisted of a truck and auto, a house trailer, and a barnyard on wheels. A trailer with a cow, a calf of 40 a calf and 40 chickens. At Anchor Point, they are to join Mrs. Peterson's brother and wife and Kruger's parents, the Reverend and Mrs. H. G. Kruger, formerly of Spokane. I guess they're moving. You wouldn't carry yeah. a menagerie of animals with you if you weren't, right? That reminds me. Yeah, that reminds me of the um, Clampets. The, the people that take like the, I guess the caravan across the. Yeah, the wagon the, trails. Yes. 
just for my, also there was that game we I played in um, in elementary school about which he can survive on the caravan. Unrelated, but I guess uh, well, this is in Belgium. That's a cool photo. I like that. What is that the, was it? What's the uh, theme? Unique. Unique. Gotcha. I even said it rhymed with profile photo. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I paid attention to what you said, I'd be happy. No, you never pay attention to what you say. Um, oh, look, here's another one. Everybody is unique. Oh, how cute. You are unique. I am unique. Here's a picture of the one and only me. <laughs> um, That's from Joyce. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the harness racing again. Mm hmm. And then, oh, this is the, the most unique part of my family has to be the archer, specifically my maternal great-grandmother, Alice Johnson and her siblings, Clara Archer married Hugh Ambrose Archer, and they had Hetty, Samuel, Theodore, Benjamin, Alice, and Reba. I had the pleasure of meeting my great-great-aunt Hetty, great-great-uncle Sam and Ben, and my great-grandmother Alice. They were quirky, unique, and wonderful characters. So that photo that we saw. So my my the parents of my wife's maternal grandmother had there were nine girls and one boy. He was born as last of the ten children. So he was the one boy out of nine girls. <laughs> oh no, the tragic thing was this young man was killed in action in Russia in nineteen forty one at the age of twenty six. Oh We saw this one, the, the sculpture head baby. Oh, look, here's the sculpt. The, where's the head? Where's the baby head? Where's the baby? Okay, this is the oh, game. Oh, there it is. There's the baby heads. Did you find it? <laughs> baby heads. When I think of unique, I think of my paternal grandmother, Patricia Stewart. She was the only grandparent that I never met as she passed away four years before I was born. Um, and we have the last the caravan. Speaking of the caravan, we have a comment here from Thomas. It says that he moved, his mom moved from Michigan to Alaska, and her mom documented the trip in the newspaper articles, and he's found the articles. That is cool. I bet you're thankful cool. for that. Do you have them linked on the profile? Well, I guess it's your mom, so I don't know if it'd be, um, but I still think that's cool. I almost, I almost I almost moved to Alaska actually. I almost moved to Alaska, fun fact. Cameos um, were the original iPhones. Selfies. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's a here's a cameo of me to take with you is on your um, journey. Okay. So that is that is it. That is all that I have. Or, uh, do we ever have them in the Facebook group? Did I what? Do we ever have them in the Facebook group as well? Have what? The photos of the week. Um, sometimes I post about it. Um, mostly that doesn't get as much traction as um traction. Ooh, big <laughs> word. The marketing word. Ooh. <laughs> um. But I sometimes I post them on there. Facebook probably would get the best reaction. Yeah, I probably. Question of the question of the week does get on Facebook. I love the genealogy squad and how people post photographs to identify the time and date. Uh, I had a presentation I did a few weeks ago, and I posted a photograph to the genealogy squad, and I had people ask people to tell me the t date of the photograph. And then I took all of that information and I used it in my presentation. It, I love old photographs and people that can identify them. I'm not the best of it, but it's fun. Okay, well, I guess we can pass the torch off to Kathy.
the torch. Just don't burn the place down, Kathy. <laughs> well, I'm not sure exactly what's expected of me here, but um, well, well, we can just um, so you're you're part of the Native American Project. So what 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 is one of the, like the main goals of the Native American Project? Well, currently or something you're working towards? I guess we can start there. There, there are probably three things that the project um, focuses on. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if it's just because my feed or if that, if it, if it's in general, but in my wiki feed, I get a thing that tells me every time somebody does a tag that says Native Americans. Um, so I see every week, probably a dozen people that that add that tag to their profiles that they're interested in Native Americans. Um, so I usually go and look at those people's profiles. We try to to just kind of see if there's any if there's any questions on the G to G. Um, we try to follow up on those. So part of it is trying to get information out to people and to help people um, who are looking for ancestors, that sort of thing. So that's one of the things the project does. Um, Another focus, and it's a hard one, um, is to try to make sure that the people that are in Wikitree all have good profiles. Um, an awful lot of people are like the Massasoit one, um, that in the past people wanted to get them out on Wikitree because they're well-known people or whatever, and they've just copied a biography from someplace else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those biographies are not so good. Um, I mean, some of them are really awful and some of them are just sort of mundane. Um, so gradually as we see those and people take an interest, um, sometimes we'll post a G to G thread and say, can somebody help the biography of such and such a person? And people will kind of jump in and do some research and improve those profiles. Um, and we spend unfortunately an awful lot of time sort of debunking mythology. Um, I tell people that probably 95% of what you find on the internet about Native Americans is bogus. Um, and something like one in six people in America thinks that they actually have a Native American ancestor, which is clearly impossible. Um, <laughs> and, and nobody really understands why, um, why that is. I mean, obviously there's lots of people that think they're related to royalty in Europe too. So, um, People, I think, just want to be connected to something. Yeah. Um, but we've spent some, that we've had several people who were really good at research, um, and, and we've taken some really big, big myths that are on the internet, and uh, in some cases spent months researching and uh, building these huge spreadsheets and, and correcting, you know, sometimes a dozen or more profiles. Um, so we have a lot of, people that are marked as, as mythical or as disputed ancestry and those kind of things. Um, and it's kind of too bad that we spend so much time doing that um, because what we'd really like to do is get, um, you know, real people with, with good profiles. And mm -hmm. um, we, we just don't have very many people on Wikitree who are actual citizens of Indian nations. Um, and, it, it's not an easy process. The, there aren't good records. There are very few records before the late 1800s, um, which makes research very difficult because it's it's what white people wrote down and what white people thought was important. Um, and families had very little importance. I mean, you know, men, they write about battles and they write about chiefs and they write about trade. Um, and they don't write about people's families. They probably never met people's families. Uh, so trying to put together who was related to whom, um, it's really complicated and difficult. And I think sometimes people sort of get started and then they're like, Ugh, you know, this wasn't fun. <laughs> and they just kind of abandon it. So I go down rabbit holes. I mean, I'm someone who goes down rabbit holes all the time. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm sure many of us do. <laughs> so I know a lot more about other tribes than I ever did. And I know a lot more about a lot of other people's families than I think I ever wanted to know in some cases. <laughs> um, we, you know, it, it, 
we could definitely use use if people like research and they like writing. Um, there's some really good opportunities in the project. We've tried to build some pages. Um, if you click on where it says Native American Project, I think that'll take you to like the project page. Um, and we've tried to start putting together things like um, reliable sources and um, adding some things like that. We've made the requirements for joining the project a little more stringent than they used to be. I think a lot of projects are doing this. We're asking people to have been a member for a while and to have built a certain number of profiles and then to give us an example profile of a Native American person um, to kind of show the quality of their work before they join the project. Um, there's just an awful lot of profiles out there that say Indian woman, um, uh, that sort of thing, which is is unfortunate. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of people who are interested in a general way, but not a lot of people who are interested in a specific. Way. <laughs> do you have a Do you have a project profile that you are particularly fond of? I don't know that I do. <laughs> Every time I go into, I always see something more. Um, one of the problems that we have, and I don't know, and it, it's certainly been discussed ad nauseum on G to G, is finding people. We have an awful problem with duplicates. Um, somebody was working on a family that, you know, there were two people, and I think there were seven profiles for, for two people. Um, you know, and here's an example. Um, if you don't know that that's sitting bull, um, mm. you might not know that that's sitting bull. So you might go out and create a new profile for sitting bull. Um, that's a crazy cool background though. So I don't know who, I, I, I don't do any of those kinds of things. I'm, I'm not good with that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm the sort of just the facts, ma'am. Um, so we've started working on sitting bull, um, to clean up that profile. He had a, as many of these people do, he had a lot of stray children um some of his children many of his children were duplicated um so we're we're again i've started learning about the lakota um and started working on on cleaning up his family um and again you'll see if you look at that profile that quite a bit of it is just copied and pasted from uh, other places yeah. it's i mean times have changed certainly. Um, but I do think it's important that when we work on these profiles that we try to do them from the perspective of the person and not from the perspective of Ameri the American or European perspective. Um, Good. And, and somebody like uh, Sitting Bull really, really should have an incredible profile on Wikitree. And, and the, the actual base of that is there. It's so exciting that the project is taking such care and working specific profiles to make them better. So you don't have a specific favorite? No, I don't think so. I've worked, um, I mean, they just, the profiles that I do don't have, have fancy backgrounds and fancy pictures. <laughs> um, you know, I, we have a list of some example profiles, but to be honest, I. I'm not sure that I would pick them as examples because they may look nice, but, um, mo and I'm picky, but I think most of them don't, don't really meet what I think should be the standards for accuracy and documentation. Um, so there, sure that's true for all projects. I mean, when you yeah. get back to the point where there aren't a lot of records, um, it, it becomes quite difficult. It's fun, but it's work. <laughs> Tommy actually had a question that probably can be uh, Kathy and Mag's question. <laughs> Have Native Americans made use of DNA testing in their research? Do you guys um, use that sometimes? I guess it's also difficult because you said there's not a lot of Native American on Wikitree. Um, no, and they're, they're uh, Kathy, if you want to take this, you can. Well, no tribe uses DNA. Um, DNA can't identify a tribe for starters. There are a few markers that are um, associated with Native American ancestry. 
Um, and most of the testing companies, their reference profiles are people from um, Central America and the Southwest. Um, so, but Native American could be anybody from Alaska to, um, you know, whatever the bottom end of the of South America is. So it's it's not really. Tribes sometimes use it for paternity. Um, so um, a lot, some tribes these days are are concerned of it. A lot of it has to do with money, but they're very concerned about people being actual legitimate members of their tribe. And so they do do paternity testing now. Um, but other than DNA showing me that, or showing you that you're related to me and that I'm, you know, that I'm Cherokee. So maybe because you're related to me, you might be. Um, DNA is not really that useful in, in actually identifying family members. Um, from an archaeological standpoint, DNA has been used widely to um, identify uh, remains of individuals and connect them to the different groups who originally entered the U.S. across the Bering Land uh, Bridge. And as well, they are finding older archaeological digs, especially in Mexico and some other areas where they're connecting those to possible earlier um, immigration patterns for uh, Native Americans, but basically the majority or 99.9% .9 of those uh, of, of Native Americans have um, Russian um, steps kind of ancestry. They go back through that area in the ancient times for DNA. Um, a lot of uh, Native American tribes, Aboriginal tribes, Inuit tribes, First Nations tribes, uh, and South American tri tribes are reticent to do DNA testing for genealogy because it does kind of shake up the origin stories that those traditions have held so firmly about, um, about their arrival here. And, and it's the whole science versus beliefs thing. So a lot of Native American tribes aren't testing because of that origins. The origins are questioned. Um, there was an interesting um, archaeological story about some of the uh, uh, southwestern native groups and actually interviewed some of the um, chiefs of the area and they said no they don't do DNA and they wouldn't suggest DNA to their uh, members because knowing the DNA doesn't change who they are. There you go. Well, and the other thing is that that being Native American, I'm a citizen of Cherokee Nation. And just like being an American, I didn't have to take a DNA test when I got my American passport. Right. I'm an American. I'm an American citizen. I'm also a Cherokee citizen. Um, and that that's a nationality. It's a citizenship. It's not genealogy. I right. think the thing is that that most Native Americans will tell you, we know who our families are. I know way more about my Cherokee ancestors than a lot of my European ancestors. Uh, right. And so I don't need a DNA test to tell me who those cousins are because, you know, I know who they are already. <laughs> and also the, the pattern of assimilation that uh, that tribes took on um, in South Carolina, there are a ton of tribes, especially along the coast who were decimated or completely, um, people say, destroyed by the, the English incursions when in fact a lot of them were, but the ones that weren't were assimilated and taken in by other Native American tribes. So to go back to what Kathy said, that having a DNA test, we're going to test with everybody um, because the tribes are so interlocked and inter uh there were people who went to live with with different tribes so you're going to have a lot of assimilation and intermarrying between the other uh interesting thing is that there is a a group of meti here who um are testing dna and there are some algonquins who've been doing dna testing uh to determine if certain sites are actually their burial grounds their areas, their, their sacred places where they have been burying their uh, people so that, that that information is accepted by the Canadian government and they, they actually can recognize it. For the Matis, 
the Metis is kind of like this third group of um, of Aboriginal Canadians who kind of are in a limbo state. And so Metis are doing some testing to uh, be able to have the government uh, recognized uh, tribal affiliations within the U within Canada and to be able to take advantage of some of the treaties. Um, Canada handled uh, Aboriginal differently than the U.S. did. Um, in some instances, Canada far exceeded everybody else in their treaties and sticking to their treaties. Yet, Canada also has the uh, residential school programs where they were actually taking children out and trying to assimilate them into Canadian culture. A uh, horrible, horrible thing. And so DNA testing is being used to identify some of the graves at some of these sites to connect them back with their families. So there is some testing going on up here uh, to try and make connections that have been taken away from families. There you go. Interesting. Thank you, Max. You're welcome. Mm. The Lost Colony. I had a, an inquiry about the Lost Colony and about the Lumbee. And um, Roberta Estes also has a project going. She's going to hate me for saying this, but she has a project, a DNA project for the Lost Colony, trying to determine where they were assimilated into. That's the going uh, thing right now is that the Lost Colony wasn't really lost. They had to go and live with the locals, the natives, because they were starving and hurricanes and all that. Hmm. So there are an interesting possibility, and it's actually quite quite likely that that like the pilgrims, maybe that many of them were probably died from disease or starvation, and the ones who were left were a small enough group that um, someone kindly took them in. Yeah, but so DNA for me and uh, the Native Americans and the Aboriginals and the Inuits and everybody, it I think it's fascinating the connections that can be made when, uh, when the tribes are agreeable to do that. And there have been some bad experiences too, unfortunately, which, which um, you know, a couple of tribes agreed to DNA testing for um, inherited diseases and that kind of thing. And then the researchers um, use the DNA for other purposes and that has turned off a lot of groups that that might have had some interest. Um, oh. That's unfortunately a common occurrence with minority groups that yeah. people don't take the care um, that they might in other areas. I think that that's one of the biggest privacy questions in, in DNA just in general. That's endemic, that people want to know how their DNA is being used and they want control over that. Did, so I don't know if anybody that's watching has any questions to Kathy, they can put it in the chat about the project if they want. And how do you join the project, Kathy? You told us um, some requirements. There's a G2G link. There's usually a question that um, gets posted from time to time that says, are you interested in the in the Native Americans project? And then you can reply to the, the question and um, Sarah will come back and say, these are the requirements and, you know, have you join us when you're ready. So it's pretty simple to join. Mm -hmm. and the, the one thing that, that you do have to do now is to create a Native American profile and, um, you know, I, properly I see, sourced I and that sort of thing. I see that there's some cool teams, Native Americans tribe team, resources and integration team, myths and legends teams, profile improvers team, trail of tears. The myths and legends team, having worked with the project in the past, I know that that's an incredibly uh, hard part of this project. Well, it's, you know, sometimes Jelaine and I feel like we're playing whack-a-mole uh, yes. because yes. we get somebody cleaned up and then you know, all of a sudden, a month later, they they get duplicated, or or one of these mythical parents or children suddenly pops up again, and and you go back through the whole thing. Um, you know, there's just you know, it's like everybody wants to be descended from Henry VIII or something. Everybody wants to be descended from Pocahontas. 
And there are certainly oh. a lot of people who are, but there are even more people who aren't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what? that's, I won't say those teams, we'd love to have people on all of those teams. Um, but the, the project, the actual worker bees in the project is a very small number. And that's probably, that may be true for all of the projects that. Um, what brought you to the project? I mean, obviously you have Cherokee history and ancestry. What, what brought you to the project? I think it's fascinating that you were here working <laughs> on it. I think it's great. <laughs> Well, I've been doing genealogy for a very long time, and I, I found Wikitree several years ago and, and liked the idea of the, the one profile per person and really liked the idea that these were sourced, documented information. Um, and somehow or other, I, I connected with Jeannie Roberts and Jelaine Smith, who were working on the myths and legends. And, and I think something came up and I responded to it, and they're like, oh boy, fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> <All of a sudden. laughs> I was in what, over my head. What's what's your favorite part of the project? Um, or I guess, or what do you enjoy doing the most in the project? I actually am you know, like talking about it. I like talking about it, but I really like learning about, um, I've, I've learned about a lot of tribes that I knew next to nothing about by, by, you know, working on some of these people with the, the sort of skeleton or, or poor profiles. So I've ended up reading about all kinds of other tribes, um, some that, you know, most of which I knew pretty much nothing about. So um, you can't see my, my library behind me, but um, I, you know, I'm, I'm like on the book a week plan. <laughs> Cool. I think a lot of us are. Something comes up, and it's like, eh, yeah, I could probably use this book. So, <laughs> books about the Lakota, and books about the Cheyenne, and books about the Catawba, and the so so you have a, a good perspective to be able to um, be a project coordinator. Has your perspective about other tribes changed? The Choctaw or I know, I know that as the Cherokee were shifted west, that there was lots of assimilation in. Have you knitted together um, your information? Where did your family start and end with the Cherokee? Um, my grandfather's parents, my grandfather was Cherokee. Both of his parents were Cherokee. His father lived in what's now Tennessee, and his mother lived in what's now Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and they both ended up losing their homes and, and going to Indian territory at the time of the Trail of Tears. Um, I'm sorry for that. They were, you know, they, they were genetically more white than Indian, um, both of them, but that didn't really matter to the people that wanted to get rid of them. Um, mm -hmm. My second great grandfather was a white man married to an Indian woman and he was put in jail in Georgia um, because he was an adopted Cherokee and he refused to take an oath of allegiance to the state of Georgia, which they wanted, so they threw him in jail. What about what about the the? We have um, Cherokee who married into our family, um, and unfortunately or fortunately, I'm a Dillard from Dillard, Georgia, and I'm assuming that your family is from that area, North Georgia. Yes, yeah, uh, I mean, they they, so, they lived in Pine Log. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, our, our family has some Cherokee who married into our family. Um, and the, the rumor that I've heard is that some Cherokee married into the English families to keep themselves from having to go on the trail. Well, in theory, nobody had to go on the trail. Um, the, the Indian Removal Act said that you could stay if you wanted to, in a sense, give up your your uh, position as an Indian person and become a, an American citizen. Instead of being an Indian citizen or a Cherokee citizen, you you had to become an American citizen, right? Right. So, so at the time of the Trail of Tears, at least for the Cherokee, um, about fifteen hundred Cherokee people remained in the East. About a thousand of those lived in the mountains in North Carolina. And they're now what's called, they're the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Right. 
And then there were about 500 other people who were mostly married, had white spouses, which was mostly meant a Cherokee woman married to a white man. Yep. Um, and those people in Georgia, they had to go to the legislature and petition to be allowed you know, to become American citizens or Georgia citizens. And so, um, and then a, a few people stayed in Tennessee and a few people stayed in Alabama, but over the federal government continued to pay people to leave and people knew their neighbors were Indian. And so people continued to move West um, all the way through the rest of the 1800s until about 1890. Um, so most of the mixed blood Cherokee people, I mean, they were mixed blood Cherokee people who stayed behind in Georgia and, and Tennessee and Alabama. There was a census done, it wasn't really a census, it was a payment in 1851 and 52. So there actually are really good records of the people who stayed because there was money involved. And so people were like, sign me up. Um, you hear a lot of stories that people hid out and you know didn't want to get on the rolls and that was not the case at all because when somebody was coming along offering free money, um, it was the exact opposite. It was like everybody his brother wanted to get in on the act. So there actually are very good records for Cherokee people who remained in the East if you can get your, and it shouldn't be that hard to get your family back to 1850. So um, it's crazy cool that you're, you're taking on a leadership role in this project and I love it and I love your perspective and I appreciate your perspective and your heritage and your mindset. I'm so excited about the work that you and Jelaine and, and others have been doing with the project. It's great. Well, thank you for that. It's, it's, it's always nice to be noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we appreciate you coming on Kathy and talking about the Native American project. Yes. So, do we have any any more questions for Kathy and the, the people who are watching or any kind of last words you want to say Kathy about the project? Um, As I said, we're we're always happy to have if, if you like researching and learning about people you don't know anything about. Yeah. <laughs> we have plenty of opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Expand your horizons. Yeah. If you're if you're getting bored of your own family. That's right. Yeah. You're gonna... <laughs> we'll find you a new one. <laughs> if you need some if you need some away time from your research. <laughs> I need Sometimes some you need to step away time from work so I can do research. <laughs> That's why I had a golfing a thon last weekend. So um, well, if there's no more questions or Kathy, you don't, you know, they want Native American project, they need people. So if you want to join, you know, you know how to sign up, do GGG posts, real simple. Um, and I guess that's, I guess, that, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, I guess we will see you. <laughs> So ne next Wednesday is the first Wednesday of the month. Can't believe it's December already. So we will have a Wednesday live stream, 8 p.m. Eastern time, Wednesday. Thank you, Mags, for the moose. Um, oh, Tommy has a last minute question. How many approximate profiles are there in the project? I have no idea. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea. I mean, the, the project doesn't manage all that many profiles. Um, so there are a lot of people that are identified as Native American. That You could try uh, the category pages, but you'd have to go through all the tribes to get all of the tri the categories. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah. A lot of people have added a lot of uh, profiles for sure. So we're yep. not. There's probably a lot. But not a, a certain lot. number. I think a lot. Lots. <laughs> lots of profiles. Okay. So See, like we, got, said, we almost got through the day without talking about blueberry pie. <laughs> well, it's Thanksgiving. We kind of, you know, it was about it was about oh, that old pumpkin crap. I, you know um, what I wanted on Thanksgiving? I wanted a pecan pie. Pecan. One of my favorites. <laughs> Nobody showed up with a pecan pie for me. Pecan pie. 
Pecan. 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 Um, so join us, join us, join us Wednesday for our monthly live stream. Not sure of the topic yet, but it will be finalized this weekend. And join us next Saturday um, for another fun time with Mags and I and surprise guest. <laughs> um, well, so next time again, thank you, Kathy, for joining us. Yeah, uh, it was fun. I really enjoyed meeting you. Yeah. Yes, it was nice yes. meeting both of you too. <laughs> yes. Okay. So goodbye, everybody. Wait, wait. Good job. Wait. Where's your Anna? I know my mom didn't pop up today. What? How rude! I, I feel a loss. <laughs> I feel a great loss. Yeah. Okay. She's watching maybe in the background, but I'll make sure she comes on next week just for you, Max. Listen, I'm okay if my friends don't want to see me. I'm okay. Okay, well, Max is sad. Goodbye. Oh.